All right, growing up, I not only just loved to fish when I could <clears throat> at any time, any place, uh, but I like to just think about fishing even when I couldn't fish. You know, that's the thing. It's just like you just constantly revolve the thoughts about like, what are you going to do? How are you going to catch? What are you going to use? Um, but I also used to just play video games all the time during the winter when you couldn't fish and I didn't ice fish that much. So I very first started off with this thing, PlayStation 1 Big Bass World Championship. The biggest thing, this thing was all about fishing in 3D. It was crazy. So, but there was a lure on this game that I was obsessed with. It was the only lure I would ever fish with. I don't even know if I would catch the biggest fish or if I would catch the most fish. I don't even know if I knew how to play the game outside of just fishing for that lure. So, but it was a man's tail chaser. And I have never fished personally with the man's tail chaser, but I have one and I've had it for a long time, this right here. So I thought what would be sweet is let's just make our version of a man's tail chaser. This particular thing is just so weirdly shaped. It's just such an odd bait, but I recollect back with Hank Parker that I used to catch fish on that all the time in this game. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna replicate one of these and we're gonna see if we can catch some fish. So stick with us and stay tuned. Here we go. Not only was this thing oddly shaped, it has a ton of rattle and it's quite heavy. So it prim, I would say primarily does a nice slow sink to it, but um, we're gonna try a few different things with wood, obviously. So I'm gonna cut two of these out um, and then I'm gonna directly cut them in half and kind of do some internal whittling so I can get some of the, uh, the, the ball bearings that I'll use to create some of the rattle. And, and we're just gonna try to see if it works. So it's gonna be an adventure. It may not turn exactly like what we want, but we're gonna try to catch a fish on it anyways. So we're gonna start with the cutting process, the sanding process, just kind of get it all uh, shaped out. We're gonna draw a midline on these. That way I know exactly where I'm gonna to need to cut. Try to keep things about as sync, as in sync as possible. Time to cut it directly in half. both cut in half and so again as you can kind of see when I plan on basically gluing these back together I'm gonna chamfer the edges trim it down this is about actually the width of a normal man's tail chaser I think that's about four four tenths two fifths of an inch thick um, which is about the same width I mean I'll put it right up against it pretty close. So we're gonna trim them down a hefty amount, but I, I definitely wanna get the rattle in there and then all the weight that I'm gonna incorporate too, just to keep it pretty heavy. Next thing is I'm just gonna use a Dremel. I, I've really enjoyed using Dremels. They're just awesome for miniature making. So I'm gonna kind of carve out these little cavities and um, both sides carve it out and then I'm gonna use super glue to harden the wood and seal the wood inside there so it makes it really hard when every time um, one of these, I think they're nickel, nickel BBs or steel BBs hits it, it'll make it a really, really pronounced rattle and hopefully give it sort of as close to a replication of that as I can. So.
and I will put the other match on top and that's it. That's the start. And it's gonna get louder as I trim off that wood and as well as I seal it on the inside to make sure it gives it a little extra kick, so. All right, it is now glued back together and the rattling nickel uh, BBs are good to go. And so now I just need to start generally shaping the bait, get it to the size and the width that I want. And then we'll add some weight, uh, some lead into the belly of that and go from there. Just sanded down the shape to where we like it. Now I'm going to need to curve the edges here so I can do, I'm probably gonna do a little bit of trimming with a knife and then, uh, and then I'll end it with just some solid hand sanding with the 120 grit sandpaper and the vise. almost completely shaped out. Um, I've sanded it down with 120 grit. It is pretty smooth. Still here, all that rattle, which is good. Um, I just now need to figure out the weight process. So I need to put in a lot of weight because this, just any wood is pretty buoyant. This is poplar. So I'm thinking about three or four quarter inch holes that are maybe going to be quarter inch deep, just cause I don't want to get to that other pocket of which I had already inserted that nickel bead. <clears throat> so try to get it pretty base heavy. The one thing about this particular bait and you want it to fall um, obviously balanced. So you need to find the center of gravity, which is pretty simple by just taking the piece of wood or, or you know, your lure, figuring out where and gently by gently pinching it, you're gonna figure out where it's wanting to fall. So with this one, the center of gravity is about right here. And so I'm gonna to need to put the majority of my weight between this section and this section. And what that does is it just allows that bait to sub basically submerge or suspend evenly. Um, so you'll see most of the holes will go right in that section there. All right, we got the lead weight in there. I'm gonna just do some more sanding. Uh, I'm gonna drill the hook hangers and then the line tie right there. Probably drill a small little area just for some eyes because 
I think the old ones just had sticker eyes, but this one will maybe give a little 3D eye action. But we're getting pretty close and it's looking just like the old tail chaser that man's used to make. As we said, this is not a vintage West Virginia defensive team. They showed that in the first half. All right. And now we're into the painting session. And for anyone that knows anything about the man's tail chaser, they're usually pretty bright, pretty vibrant, um, crazy colors. So I'm actually gonna do a couple different ones, but this one that I'm gonna put in the video is just gonna be really, I'm trying to maybe go just two different colors, uh, or two different paints. So I am literally gonna go pearl black, wicked pearl, all the way over, and then we're just gonna do layers of this color shift nebula copper on top. But uh, prior to doing the nebula copper, I will cut out a stencil and we're gonna stencil in some kind of like fire tiger, uh, of fire tiger stripes to look. So first we're just gonna lather on a black base coat on, of this. All right, so this orange tape is uh, a tape that I got at Hobby Lobby. It's a model model paint tape, so it's super light. So when you put it on any of your baits um, or your lures that you're painting, it shouldn't rip any of the paint off. So I'm simply just going to use this as my base layer stencil and be very randomized with my pattern. But... Uh, Cut out a handful of these, stick them on and see how it looks. The tape has been applied. It's a meticulous, long process, but we are done. So this is Green Stuff World, Color Shift, Nebula Copper. I have not used Nebula Copper before, but it looks pretty cool. It's like a color change red. Um, so I'm gonna layer up probably four or five different coats of this stuff on there and uh, we're gonna see what, it, see what it turns out to look like. Okay, we're gonna just start the big reveal. Slowly peel off these pieces of tape. There it is. The homemade man's tail chaser with a sweet nebula chrome 
Nebula Copper Chrome Fire Tiger look. I will now just need to put some eyes on this one. Pretty cool top player there too. We're gonna put some eyes on this. Black will look the sharpest and then clear coat it a couple more times and then this thing will be ready to fish. So we are at a local lake, clear coated everything and we're gonna see it's pretty bright bright uh, nice warm day so i i don't even have a gopro so i'm gonna throw the big camera up the whole time record some stuff on the phone and then we'll uh, we'll see if we can get into anything so man's tail chaser homemade version all right there's really not a whole lot of action on this thing i didn't put a split ring on the front that's how i i have one without the split ring and maybe i need to but if you can see it it's pretty solid as a twitch bait and it sinks quick which is ideal but uh, I already got snagged once so I don't want to lose it but we're gonna keep fishing with it and try to get into something all right and here's the actual man's tail tracer you can kind of see how it sinks pretty much the exact same um, it doesn't have a front split ring either, but that's just again how I've had it for like years. Sorry about that. So this doesn't do much. Twitch bait, that's about it. But if I uh, had split rings, I'd put it on there, but I don't. So it might be a failed fish mission, but I can tell you that mine acts pretty much just like this one does. Maybe better, because it's more buoyant in the water, so it stays up. This one, when you reel, it just rolls. Well, that, uh, that lure kind of sucked. I think I need to get a split ring on the front. Um, that's the main, main issue. The one man's tail chaser that I have, um, I've never fished with it before, so it doesn't have a whole lot of action. So all I'm gonna do is put a split ring on it and see what happens, but that'll be the end of the video. I didn't catch anything. It's nice out, but fishing is just awful late March. So thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, Hit subscribe, comment down below if you want me to do something specific, any ideas, I'm all for them. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.